our assistant pastor, Amen. a woman that is the embodiment under control, strength under control. Amen. Yes. Amen. Assistant Pastor Christina Lar. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Good morning, saints. Of the Most High. Amen. Amen. I am so pleased and very honored to be before you this morning. I will say a quick prayer and we will get to it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I come before you this morning, Lord, asking you to remove all of myself, Lord, and fill me with you, Lord. Speak through my lips, Lord. Give me your thoughts, Lord. Give me the words, Lord, to say to your people, Lord, for encouragement, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. I'd like to thank Pastor in his absence and First Lady just for the thought of me being able to do this. Amen. Amen. This morning, my title is God is Shaping You. Amen. 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 God is Shaping You. I'll be coming from Isaiah 64 and 8 will be my base scripture. And that reads, but now... O Lord, thou art our father, we are the clay, and thou art potter, and we all are the work of thy hand. Amen. 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 God is shaping you daily, continually. God told me this is the encouragement for leaders, and we all know that we're all leaders inside and outside of church. So whether it's on your job, at your home, at school, we're all leaders, we're all in a position of power, a Amen. position of leadership. Amen? Amen. Amen? Lately, we have been talking about elevating our thoughts. We had a wonderful message brought by our very own Erica Lachey last week. And we know that elevating our thoughts, our three ways of doing that is reading, prayer, and meditation. Amen. And those are all ways that's going to just get our level of thought higher so we can get further in life. Amen? Amen. We were also told, though, that our emotions, which is our souls, our mind will emotions, but our emotions will trip us up or keep us behind in trying to go forward. And that's something you have to deal with first. And your emotions about everything, but truly your emotions about yourself. Amen. So you have to have your self-esteem, your self-worth has to be higher than anything. For you to be able to go where you need to go. You have to believe that you can get there. Amen? Amen? You have to believe that you yourself, you're a good person. That God didn't make any mistakes. That you're where you're supposed to do, you're supposed to be by a purpose. It's on purpose that you're going through what you're going through. That you've been where you've been. And that you are where you are at this very moment. Amen? Amen. 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 Every new level of life requires a evaluation of yourself. This morning at 9.30 seminar, we learned from First Lady, we went over self-evaluations for accountability. Now, when you're going into something new with your life as far as a job, maybe a new career change, or anything that requires faith, a leap of faith, you have to reevaluate yourself. You have to rethink about where you're going, where you've been. You have to know that Basically, a pep talk to yourself. You have to know that you're ready for this. You have to know that this is on purpose and that God has put this in your heart and in your line, your path on where you're going. You have to know that. You can't be scared. You can't, you know, think back like, where my past? I wasn't really this upright person, and, and I don't think I deserve this. But you deserve everything that God has for you. You deserve that power, that authority that he has placed inside of you. Once you accepted Jesus into your heart, there was this light that just went inside you and it shines. Everywhere you go, people can see it. People can feel it. Amen? So the, the people who don't feel that they deserve a position of power, that you don't feel that this next level of life that God's trying to give you, you just don't feel like it's right. We're going to go to John 2, 24 and 25. John 2, 24 and 25. And that reads... But Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men and needed not that any should testify of man. For he knew what was in man. 
God knows what he put inside of you. So he's not going to lead you anywhere that you can't go. He's not going to put you on a pedestal that you don't deserve. Amen? Because all of his authority, all of his power is in you. You have to realize this. You have to know that. Every new level of life will require you to reevaluate. Reevaluate. Now, your past is not what people will see once you break free of it. You have to let it go. You have to get over it. You have to understand that it made you into who you are today. Yeah. Your past does not lead you. It only guides you to where you're trying to go. You don't stay there. You don't get stuck there. It's not who you are. It's who you were. It's what made you. It's only there to build you up. I'm just here to encourage you to stay on the path because we're all leaders. And when you get into a leadership position, you feel... You feel less than if you're not ready for it, right? And a lot of things God gives us, we're not really ready for, or in our minds, we're not. But he's, he's given us every ability that we need that's possibly readily available for us. So from my testimony, just getting this new position that I'm in, being your assistant pastor, which I truly, truly take fully, and, and I'm honored, but I'm scared. And that's just me being real. I'm scared because I don't feel that I'm someone that you guys can look up to. I don't feel that I am ready to be able to tell somebody how their life should go. So I feel like I'm not deserving of that. And when I started making this message, I knew it was talking to me and I knew it was part of my testimony, you know? Mm -hmm. I know God's not done with me. And I think the thought is just, you know, grow and show them that it's, it's possible, that it can be done, right? Amen. So yeah. as you guys Amen. see me change, I just hope that I inspire you to keep going on your path. Amen. I hope that I build you up with my actions and, and who I am and who I'm becoming. You know, it will inspire who you are. Um, I want you guys to think about a potter's will. I don't know if anybody's really taken a pottery class or actually dealt with that. But um, the movie Ghost was the closest I've gotten to it. But there's a will. You start off with just a mold of clay. So it's just a clump of clay. And there's this wheel that's spinning. And it spins slower at first. And you have to mold. So God is molding us. We're on this, this wheel. The wheel is life, right? Mm -hmm. So the more we're on it, the faster it's starting to go. So he's molding us. We're getting round. He's making us. But then you get to a point where he starts taking stuff out. So he's trying to hollow it out because he needs to put stuff in. Oh, so yeah. in the middle, it's getting, it's getting left. He's taking stuff out, right? It's going around. It's going around. Yeah. The faster life goes, because things keep going, things keep turning, right? The faster it goes, you have to keep your clay moist, right? It has to stay moist in order for you to be able to mold it. But the faster it goes, the faster it dries out. So you have to keep putting water on it, that living water, that holy water. you got to stay in your word. You have to keep putting yourself back into the word and with God we know from last week that God is not going to do something for us that we can do for ourselves uh, now since we can water ourselves when you get dry you have to know you have to get back to your word right. when you start feeling like you're stagnant you're not moving things aren't really working the way you thought they were you have to get that water back on you right because God's not going to do it for you because it's something you can do yourself it's in you you don't even necessarily have to read the word. The word is in you. When you get those thoughts that we're learning to just remove from ourselves, you have to replenish them with, with great thoughts. Think on the word. Think on the things that God has done for you. Think on the things that you want God to do for you. Amen. Think on the, the places that you see yourself going. You're not sure how you're going to get there. But you know God's going to take you there. Amen. And that's what you have to think on. So as the, the wheel's turning, the wheel's turning, and you get those dry spots, you're putting that water on there, and he's molding you. He's daily, continuously, he's working on molding you into who you're supposed to be. God is shaping you. He's shaping you into that leader, that leader that, that deserves that, that position. You know what I'm saying? That leader that is on top of everything. That leader that everybody sees as somebody that you just don't see yet. He is shaping you into that person. We weigh ourselves down with those unwanted thoughts of self-loathing, self-hate. We weigh ourselves down. And that takes us back to the base scripture from last week, which was an amazing message. And you really should look on that on YouTube. We're going to look at that. John, uh, 3 John 2. Amen? That was our base scripture for last week. And that reads, Beloved. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Yes. And she broke it down amazing last week, so I'm not going to go into that. But we know that that is God telling us that you have to, you have to consciously make an effort to do this thing Amen. better. You have to get better. Don't get stuck in what was 
you know what I'm saying, what could have been, what should have been, how you thought it should be. What it is right now is exactly what it should be. So we're going to take what it is right now and we're going to work with it. We're going to grow from it. We're going to learn from it. Amen. We're going to take that and we're going to do what we know we need to be doing. As leaders, people are watching us. They are. But it's not as scary as you think. You just got to stay in yourself and know that you're going in the right direction. That you're doing everything you can to please God. And when people see you pleasing God... They want to do it too. Uh, that pastor always tells us when people see you doing what's right, it just makes that they just come to you and they're like magnets and they want to do exactly what you're doing. They want to shine like you're shining. They want to smile like you're smiling. Amen. They want to feel how you're feeling. Amen. So we know that if we stay on our path, if we focus on where God has us, and know that he's taking us somewhere that's beyond our control and that's amazing. That it's going to be something worth our while and definitely worth whatever struggle it is we went through, whatever heartbreak we went through, whatever pain we were feeling, it was worth it because it made us stronger and it brought us to where we are today. Amen? God is shaping you. He is shaping you. Amen? I want us to turn to Ephesians 1 and 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. God is believing in us. God has already put in us what is here. We just have to be enlightened by it. We have to realize it. Amen? Amen? We have to know that it's there. We have to search for it. And it gets lost. It, it, we lose focus. But you can get it back easily. You can get it back easily. Just stop what you're doing and, and you just thank God and ask him to revitalize you, rejuvenate yes. you, get you back going. You know, because the fires die down. Fires don't stay you know, enormous forever. They die down. Yes. So you got to keep just adding fuel Amen. to your fire and, and just Amen. staying Amen. upbeat. Just yes. staying encouraged. You have to stay encouraged. Especially yes. being in an, a, a position of power. You have to stay encouraged. There's all kind of things trying to come against us. You just have to stay encouraged and Amen. empowered. Amen? Amen? I want you guys to know that he believes in you. He's shaping you. He's yes. shaping you yes. into exactly what he wants you to be. Amen. So please, please, let him mold you. Amen? Amen. 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 That's all I have for you this morning. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. And now it affords me great pleasure to bring up someone who I admire, someone who I trust, someone who I love, and am very, very close to. She's near and dear to my heart because she's not only an amazing woman, a strong woman, but she's intellectual. She is just a fiery woman of God, and I love her oh so much. Please, please help me welcome Minister Chantel. I just want to give an honor to God, Pastor, in his absence and First Lady. It's always an honor to be before his people, amen? I don't take amen. this lightly, amen? Because you guys are God's people, amen? amen. And God look out for y'all. He want to make sure y'all hearing the right stuff. Uh, he want to make sure y'all looking at the right stuff. He uh, wants amen. the very best for you guys, amen? amen? So that means that I got to step my game up a little bit, all right? Amen. 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 Father God, I ask that you think through my mind, Father God. Speak through my lips, Father God. And help me deliver, Father God, what thus saith the Lord, Father God. And prepare the hearts, Father God of your people, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 The minister just got up here and she talked about how important it is, amen, to take a self-evaluation. Yes. Amen. And to believe in God and the trial, amen, that he puts us through and what we have in front of us. Amen. How many people need something from God? Just, to, just need to make sure I'm in the right spot this morning. Amen. How many people need something from God so much that it almost it's almost all you think about? God, I need this. God, I need this. God, I need this. God, I need this. I don't know if you hear me. I prayed about it yesterday. I ain't seen it today. I don't know if you realize. God, I need this. Amen. Amen. But, amen, I'm going to teach you guys today how to change your perspective a little bit. Amen. And what I want to talk to you guys today is 
the importance of gratitude, amen? We've been talking yes. about elevating our level of thoughts. We've been talking about meditating. We've been talking about our emotions, our negative emotions, how we have to deal with them, our positive emotions, and how to let, us, how to let them fuel us, amen? But there's one key step, amen? Because what are we meditating on? Amen. We're supposed to be meditating on the word. Amen. amen. We're supposed to be meditating on what God has done for us. Amen. amen. I want to talk to you guys about the importance of gratitude. Amen. amen. It's in, in the absence of gratitude, we start to doubt God. How many of you guys know what I'm talking about a little bit? Because we go back and we almost, almost like we forget, amen, what he brought us from. Amen. I used to be homeless. Amen. I'm not no more. Amen. But even though I used to be homeless. Amen. And I'm not no more. All I can think about is how I want a bigger house. Amen. But because I didn't get the bigger house, Amen. I'm starting to wonder if God's still hearing my prayers. Amen. You delivered me out of that. Amen. But I want to know if you're capable of delivering me a little bit further. Amen. I want you guys to turn to Deuteronomy 1 and 27. Amen. Amen. And while you guys are getting that, I want to give you a little bit of background. Amen. amen. The children of Israel, they were slaves. Amen. They were slaves. That don't sound dope, right? They were slaves. Building straw building bricks out of straw amen. amen working amen from sun up till sundown they were slaves amen. god rose up a man to deliver them out of slavery amen now that sounds like a praise report to me i don't know about you but if i'm a slave one moment and i'm not a slave no more amen just because of the fact that i'm god's chosen person amen and he delivered me amen he raised somebody up to deliver me amen i was a slave amen and now we get to the point, amen, where they're not a slave, but they're walking, amen, trying to get to the promised land, amen. They needed food, amen, and God started pouring them down manna from heaven, amen. They would ask for stuff, amen. The man of God would ask for stuff, amen, and God is Johnny on the spot with it. I got you, amen. Now, fast forward 40 years, amen. In the beginning of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy it said on the 40th year, and the 11th month, amen. So we entering in year 41, amen. We got 12 months in a year. It's the 11th month, amen. We going on year 41, amen. The 40th year, amen. In Deuteronomy 1 and 27, it reads, And you murmured in your tent and said, Because the Lord hated us, he had brought us forth out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. That don't sound like the same God that just delivered them out of slavery, does it? No, that don't sound right, amen? But what happened is, is they're on the verge of crossing into the promised land, amen? They're on the other side of the Jordan River, amen? And they have to go scope it out. Go over there and see what you see. Tell me what you see, amen? This is the land that God has promised us, amen? And some of them didn't come back with a good report, amen? And then you have the people, amen, who didn't believe Amen. And they're in their tents now and they're murmuring and complaining. Amen. Yes. Yes. Did God deliver us out of Egypt just so that we could get killed by these people? Amen. No. Not the same God that poured manna from heaven. Not the same yes. God that sent somebody out of Egypt to deliver you. Amen. But that's what we do. That's what we do. Amen. Amen. We come in. God has blessed us. Amen. Yes. We work and thank you, Jesus. I'm so thankful. Amen. Yes. For where you brought me from. Amen. Yes. And I get to work and then all of a sudden I, c I come across a roadblock. I hit a problem. Amen. Yes. The world don't stop. Problems don't stop. Just because we're Christians don't mean we're immune to them. Amen. But the problem comes. Amen. It hits us. Amen. And then when it hits us, we don't get the answer we want when we think we want it. Amen. And then suddenly all we're consumed with is God. Did you hear me? We in church, but we say, thank you, Lord Jesus, but I need this. I honor you, Lord Jesus, but I don't know if you heard my cry because I've been praying for this for a couple weeks. I thank you, Lord, but do you hear me, amen? I want to talk to you guys about being thankful, amen? I want to talk to you guys about the importance of gratitude, amen? The minister just got up here and said, it's okay to look back sometimes. And sometimes you have to look back. Sometimes I've got to look back and say, what? you God. I know where I need to be. I know where I want to be. But thank you God I'm not where I was. Hallelujah Lord Jesus. Hallelujah Lord. I look back and I see how far I've come. Then I look forward and suddenly it's not that far away no more. Amen. Your perspective changes. Amen. Amen. We come to church, amen, we're praising, amen, we're praising God, we're thanking God, amen, amen. and our gratitude is not, it's not genuine, 
Amen. Amen. It's not real. I had a conversation with Minister Erica, and she told me that when she wakes up in the morning, she has a gratitude list. She writes down the things that she's thankful for. Amen. And she said it's really hard to be angry and mad and to think about the things you don't have when you're being grateful, right? And I'm at a point now where I need some stuff from God. And I don't know if you heard me right away because I've been praying for this for a long time. So can you hear me? God, I thank you, but I don't see what I'm looking for. Amen. So she said it's hard to be in a bad mood when you're being grateful, right? So I took a page out of Minister Erica book. I'm like, okay, I'm going to try this. All right, I'm going to wake up in the morning. I'm going to write my gratitude list. Amen. Yeah. I ain't going to lie, y'all. It was real surface for a minute. I'm like, thank you, Jesus. I woke up this morning. <laughs> Can I be real? Can I be real? Sometimes it took a minute. Thank you, God. I woke up this morning. My bills are paid. Yes, Lord. Um, you know, my bills is paid, but I don't have that much money left. But thank you because my bills are paid. My family is great. Amen. God is beautiful. Thank you. My list, my list was short, okay. y'all. I was struggling. Amen. I'm not gonna lie. I was struggling. Amen. Day two rolls around, and I'm like, you know what? I got really good people in my life. Thank you, Lord. It starts to get a little bit more personal. Still Amen. on surface, my bills are still paid. They gonna let me keep my car another month, y'all. Come on, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna be honest with you. They're not gonna kick me out the apartment today, right? Thank you, Jesus, because you know I'm here. Amen. I'm you amen but then I took a minute amen and I look back and I'm gonna tell and I'm gonna tell you guys what God has done for me amen but I look back amen I started to look back over my life amen and I look at where I am now and I start to think Lord God I should have never made it this far amen I should have never made it this far amen y'all don't understand the pastor would, get, would uh, prophesy and say you're gonna be an attorney you're gonna be this and there were moments y'all didn't think I was gonna graduate from college y'all don't hear me
came murmuring and complaining. God brought us this far so we could die. Instead of looking back, somebody should have been in the tent and slapped him and say, 40 years ago, I was a slave. I was a slave. I didn't have no tent, all right? Thank you, Jesus, but I appreciate you, but God, you're so worthy, but Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, you guys don't have to turn there, says in the last days. And it gives a list of the things that men will be in the last days. And on and on that list is unthankful. They'll be unthankful in the last days. And he says, stay away from them because those men don't have no parts of me. Amen. Yeah. They don't have no parts of me. Amen. Yeah. Because everywhere you look, if you turn to Colossians chapter 3, and if you read the Amplified Version, verse 15, verses 15 and 16, they tell you in all things, give thanks unto God. Yeah. Amen. Because you've been so good to us. I don't think you guys really understand. Amen. Yeah. How good God has been, and I get it. We go through hell sometimes. Yeah. The battle is deep, amen? Yeah. What we have before us is scary. It's big. I don't know how I'm going to get over this, amen? Yeah. But when you're thankful, you look back at how he delivered you out of the last one. Yeah. You delivered me out of the last one. So I know you won't deliver me out of this one. I know you ain't got no choice but to deliver me out of this one. And this is how you know you have reached full gratitude. Because you say, even if you don't. from amen and then we need to take that gratitude amen and we need to praise and we need to remove the butt from the end of that god i honor you god i love you god i thank you today lord i thank you lord i honor you lord you're so worthy amen amen and then in psalms in my closing amen psalms 124 amen our pastor preached this a lot, amen. He said, if it had not been the Lord. Yeah. How many of you guys can agree with me? He said, if it had not been the Lord, yeah. who was on my side? If it had not been the Lord, who was on my side? I wouldn't have made it this far. Yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Being thankful, amen. amen. Being grateful, amen, for what God has done for you. It changes your perception. Amen. And suddenly it's not about the problem. Amen. Suddenly it's not about the, the things, amen, that stop us. Amen. The things that stop us from giving God praise is no longer about the problem. Amen. 
your perspective changes, amen, and you realize, amen, you realize that if God delivered me from that, if somehow I made it from that, amen, you think he gonna stop? God delivered me then. I know he will deliver me now. Amen. And then with that gratitude, amen, with doubt removed, what happens is that your mind is at peace. I mean, and I'm talking peace, amen. I'm talking peace. Even if, even if what I think should happen don't happen. Even if the problem never goes away, amen. Even if I'm looking at this thing five years from now, amen. Amen. What I want to do right now is how many people are thankful. Amen. How many grateful people do we have in the house? Amen. I want everybody to stand up. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. And I know it's hard right now. Like I told you when I first started this gratitude list, it was it wasn't good. Thank you, Jesus. It was it wasn't deep, y'all. I'm gonna be honest. All right. When I started. It wasn't easy, amen? amen? But you continue, amen? You continue to look at what God has done for you. You take a minute to look back, amen? I want everybody to take a second and look back, amen? Look back, amen, at the things you thought God would never do for you, amen? At the places you thought you'd never move from, amen? At the infirmities that you thought you would always have with you, amen? Take a second and look back, amen? And then when you feel it, I want you to shout a praise unto God. I want you to tell him thank you, amen. And I'm not talking shit for a formality, amen, but I want you to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And if you don't feel like you have nothing to be thankful for, just keep saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I'll come to you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. I dare you to remove the butt from your to do. I'm going to do something a little bit different. This is what I want everybody to do. I want everybody to get the best gratitude gift to God that you can. A gift that says, thank you, Jesus. A gift that puts aside everything, every problem that you think you have, amen? Every place that you feel you need to get delivered from, amen? Everything that you feel like is holding you back, amen? I want you to get the best gift. The best gratitude gift that you have, amen. And I want you to give it to God this morning, amen. amen. And I want you to do it with a sincere heart, amen. Usually we write on the back of the envelopes what we want this seed to accomplish, amen. And that's amazing because we know that our pastor, he prays for those things, amen, and that then that they come to pass, amen. amen. But this time, when you give this gratitude gift, what I want you to do on the back it's just right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank this you, is for everything that you've done yeah. in my life. This is for where you brought me from. Amen. Yeah. And I don't know if I told you the end of the story with the Israelites, but God ended up killing off everybody who murmured and complained along the way. Amen. Everybody couldn't go into the promised land. Amen. And God didn't take those who murmured and complained. He waited for them to die. That's why it took so long. Amen. It wasn't supposed to take 40 years. Amen. It was an 11 day journey. Amen. But he waited. Amen. Until the ungrateful to those that murmured and complained in their tents to die off. Amen. And then after that, he rose up a new generation. Amen. A generation that was thankful to God. A generation that was courageous. A generation that said, no matter what you put against me, God, because of what you brought me from. in 
my way. Amen. Get the best gift that you can. Amen. And just say thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 I should I should have I should have failed out of middle school. Y'all shouldn't have graduated from college. Y'all don't understand. Y'all don't understand. The teachers used to call my mama about me every day. Amen. I didn't give them a day off. Amen. I wasn't supposed to make it this far. I should have been pregnant. I should be outdoors. Amen. I shouldn't have made it this far. Amen. I shouldn't be here. Not on this stage. Not with this mic in my hands. Not none of that. I shouldn't be here. And I say that definitively, amen? Yeah. But Psalms 124 says, if it had not been the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. If it had not been the Lord, who is on my side, amen? Right. If he hadn't delivered me from my mindset. If he hadn't delivered me from what I, from who I thought I was, amen? Yeah. I could never be here. While you're getting that gift together, I just want you to think about it. Take a minute and start writing the things that you're thankful for. And just keep it up. I'm telling you, day one, I have like two things on the list, y'all. I'll show it to you. But you keep doing it. You keep doing it. And suddenly, your eyes start flowing up with tears. Suddenly, you start looking back at places that you never thought that you would leave. You start looking back at darkness that you thought you would never make it through. Darkness that was supposed to stay with me. Depression that was supposed to stay with me. I wasn't supposed to make it out of that. But God said, not so. Some of the relationships we were in should have broken us, amen? But yes. God said not so, amen? Amen. God said not so. Not so. Amen. Not my child. I got too much work for her to do, amen? And she gonna wake up, she gonna realize it, amen? I failed too many times that I can count, amen? A whole bunch of times, amen? God said, not so. Don't worry about that. The path that I have given you, it don't matter what comes in your way, I gave it to you for a reason. You gonna make it through. I don't care how hard it looks, how dark it gets. It's gonna get dark sometimes. It's gonna get dark sometimes, amen? But I gave it to you for a reason. It's coming to pass, amen? It's coming to pass, amen? It's coming to pass, amen? It's Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Just come up from where you are. And after you come up here, I want you to stay up here. Amen. I'm just going to do a brief prayer. Amen. Over everybody. Father God, I just thank you, Lord Jesus, for your people, Father God, for your chosen, Father God, for your called, Father God, for your dedicated, Father God, for your anointed. Father God, I praise you, Lord Jesus. I honor you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord Jesus. They stepped out, Father God. They gave more. Father God, I thank you and I praise you, Father God, that you encompass their hearts like never before, Lord Jesus. That you change their perspective like never before, Lord Jesus. That you bring it to pass now in the name of Jesus. Say you have no power over these people. Take your hands off of them right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, God said everything that the devil meant for your heart. Everything he thought would take you out. Everything he thought would keep you from God. Everything he thought that would hinder you for the rest of your life. Yes. Everything that you forgot that you wanted, amen. God said he's turning it around right now. 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 And it don't matter what it looks like. It don't matter what it looks like, amen. All things, amen, is subject to change, amen. Amen. The, the devil has to come into submission to the word of God, amen. Bring the devil under submission to the word, amen? Under submission of your thoughts, amen? And you do that by being grateful. It's easy to meditate when you got something to meditate on, amen? I'm meditating on your goodness. I'm meditating on your grace, amen? I'm meditating on where you brought me from. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. The Bible gives us the truth, amen? But your testimony is the life. And God is working it out for 
you right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Just give God a praise right now. Give God a thunderous praise right now. I dare you to praise him. Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Keep at it. Keep meditating. Keep writing down the things that you're thankful for. Take a minute and just think about it. When you by yourself, reflect on where you were. Reflect on the things that you wanted. Reflect. And I guarantee you, if you do that, when you start writing down the things that you're thankful for, you won't have enough pages to contain it. I promise you that. 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 Because God has not, God didn't forget, amen, what he did. Amen. We forgot. And I was reading, and John, even the disciples forgot. Jesus came to die, amen, and to die on the cross. And he told his disciples the plan, amen, from jump, amen. And then he died and he rose. And even the disciples said, who is you? <laughs> amen. They were with Jesus when he did the miracles. They saw him turn water into wine. They saw him open blinded eyes. Amen. They saw him do that. They saw him get crucified. And then when he died, he rose. He revealed himself to his disciples again. And they didn't know who he was. The point I'm making is that it's not wrong to forget. It happens. It's human nature. That's not the sin. Amen. The sin is being ungrateful. Come on. Being ungrateful for those things that he's done for us.